Hey guys, it's Kristen with Scandi. Today I am actually hanging out in the empty Scandi offices, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to walk you guys through my process for how I get a good scan. So to start off, I'm gonna have two different objects that I'm going to be trying to scan today. First, I've got our adorable little pink teddy bear and then just a Yeti Nalgene bottle. So first off, looking at both of these, it's pretty easy to tell which one is going to scan better. Because there's a lot of dimension and it's not circular or cylindrical, it's not reflective, the teddy bear is going to be a much easier object to scan, whereas something that is cylindrical, it would be easier for the Scandi Pro app to lose tracking. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with the teddy bear. When I do this, I like to use this really cool tray. Um, what it allows me to do is spin the object in front of the camera as opposed to spinning my camera and my body around the object. I just find that there's less variation, less user error, and it just gets a nicer, cleaner scan. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan it here for you guys. You can see how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to grab a screen record on my phone so you can follow along as I'm doing this. All right, so I just go ahead and open Scandi Pro. Let me... Make sure I turn my screen record on. All right, there we go. So now that I have it set, I make sure that I have it set to one millimeter. At this size, I don't really need any of the background information. I just need the resolution that is going to get me all of the data of the bear and not much else. So once I have that set, I go ahead and I get it centered in frame. I like to brace my arm against the table. That way there's less up and down and moving around. And again, it's gonna help reduce variation. It's gonna help the app track a lot better. So now that I have that, we're gonna go ahead and hit scan. And then I just spin the bear. So you might get a couple of flashes, that's fine. Just take your time and be patient. I like to keep my hand at the back of the scan because then it's typically going to be outside of the scan and it's not going to cause any additional tracking issues. So just take your time and go slowly. So the bear makes it, like I said, pretty easy. He's pretty dynamic. So we'll just spin him around here. Back side is where it might get a little tricky. He's kind of flat. So it did pick up a little bit of background data there. You can see it floating there in the foreground, but it hasn't affected the scan and it's something we can always get rid of later. So just keep going. Uh, so the first time I practiced this, I got a little nervous. I was like, wait, the bear's mouth is supposed to be closed. It looks like it's open here. But you can see that's just its bow. It did not actually double scan the poor bear's face. Um, it'll come into focus here as we come back around. So we're almost back where we started. And there, we've now done a 360 of the bear. But the last thing I'm gonna do, and it's because I've forgotten this so many times, is don't forget to scan the top of the bear's head, um, or you'll just end up with the scan that has a giant hole in the head. I mean, it's fine, you can fill it in or do the scan again, but it's just a lot easier to just remember to go ahead, take the scanner up over top of the bear's head, collect all that final data, and then you just click the big red button when you're done. And so now our mesh is generating, and you guys, are following along with the screen record so you can see there there's our great scan of the bear so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this now um, and we're gonna do a part two where I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna edit and clean up that scan later so like I said bear pretty easy very straightforward now with something like this Yeti cup you kind of have to trick the scanning software into thinking that it's following along so the best way to do this is with just a small little reference object. It can be a little rock, a little uh, like pink pom-pom. I have this adorable little gnome figurine, but you just go ahead and you set that next to it. And now this is going to add as a reference point as you're spinning it around 
So even it'll appear as though this cup is spinning, which it is, because without this, it might think it's standing still and get a little confused as background information starts to change around it. So let's go ahead now, sorry for the squeak. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start again. So I've got my screen record still running for you guys. So I still have it set to, let me just double check, yeah, one millimeter resolution. And now we're gonna go ahead and scan the cup with my little gnome guy. And again, keeping my hand in the back so that it produces as little possible information. So we're just spinning it around. And the stickers that are on there and the letters, they don't really help when it comes to helping it track just because the surface is still pretty flat. But having that gnome as it circles around is the best way that I have found when you're trying to scan one of those harder objects to scan just because of their shape, that having this little reference object is the best way to go. So here is where it would probably have started to have problems, but now the gnome is back in the field of view and it is collecting all of our data for us. So the nice thing though about 3D scanning is even though this gnome is now going to pass in front of the Yeti cup, we have still been collecting all that data from different angles, so you're not gonna end up with a big black spot where it was. So you just keep on turning. We're almost back at the beginning. And, okay, we're back. And then, like I said, just remember to scan the top of it or you'll end up with a big hole in the top of your scan. Okay, give that a second and we're done. It's gonna generate the mesh for me. And there you go. You can see we got a great scan. Really good, wow, I'm very happy with that. Uh, we got a really good scan of a very hard to scan object by using this little reference one. Um, the reference guy doesn't look as good, but I wasn't focusing on making sure I was ga gathering all of his data. So next time I'm gonna show you guys how I edit within the Scandy Pro app, but hopefully this has given you guys some tips and tricks that'll help you go out and make the best scans that you could possibly make. Please let us know down below if you have any additional tips that you really like to use when you're doing 3D scanning, or if there's something like a problem that you ran into that I didn't cover here that you would really like me to explain. So just remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you all very soon for part two. Have a great day, guys. Bye.